Hello and welcome to another live on this day in royal history with myself. As always, this is a live stream chat, so I will be going to the chat room um, to see who is around at the moment. Let's just move this camera up slightly, adjust it so you can see this beautiful coronet which I am wearing. I really am enjoying wearing this one for On This Day in Royal History. Um, it's really, really pretty, obviously in gold with, um, of course, they're real diamonds going on there um, on this beautiful coronet. So today is April the 4th and we will be going back in royal history to the year of 1793 with the secret but unlawful marriage of Augustus and Augusta. Now, if you didn't know, um, Augustus later became the first Duke of Sussex. So, in its first creation, because obviously titles can return to the crown and then they can be given out again um, in new creations. So, we're going to be talking about their kind of um, ill-fated love story and romance, uh, which resulted in the marriage today, the 4th of April in 1793. Right, um, okay, let me, I am just bringing up the chat room. So, I'm hoping that notifications are going out. By the way, I've not been, obviously, a lot, everybody has not been able to have their hair done recently. So my hair is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Obviously due to everyone having to stay at home in the times that we are living in. Um, so do ignore the absolutely massive hair. Hello to Befan, Christine, Tisha, Reverend Darlene, Leanne, all channel members. Hello and welcome to you guys. Um, right, shall we begin delving back into history? I do love doing these videos. It's really, really amazing. I've got my notes. It's really, really amazing to research these different, um, on these days in royal history. So, let's delve back. I do have some things that I've already kind of, um, copied and pasted in terms of quotes, which I'm going to read at different points throughout this video. Um, they are in the form of letters that were sent by Augustus to his father, George III, but we'll get into that in a moment. So, we are going back. It is April the 4th of 1793, and it's the marriage, the unlawful marriage of Augustus and Augusta. Um, so, why was it unlawful? It was unlawful because it broke, it was in, um, it was in um, contradiction um, of the Royal Marriages Act of 1772. Now, what I want to do is read a little bit of the definition of the Royal Marriages Act of 1772, just so that you can kind of see why it was unlawful when I get to that bit in a moment. So, it was an Act of Parliament of Great Britain which prescribed the conditions under which members of the British royal family could contract a valid marriage in order to guard against marriages that could diminish the status of the royal house. The right of veto vested in the sovereign by this Act provoked severe adverse criticism at the time of its passage. And of course, that has been amended throughout the years, but this was in force at the time of this marriage. Um, so I'll get to in a moment about why George III actually wanted uh, this this to be made into, into law. Um, so Augustus was born in the Queen's house. Now Buckingham Palace, it later became Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace has had many, many different phases during its life. It started off as, um, you know, a, a kind of like a a big country house. Um, London wasn't as, as vast as it was then. It was actually, it was built on former swampland, which had been drained. Um, so at this time, it was still known as the Queen's House, um, but it, it was later to become Buckingham Palace. And he was born on January the 27th of 1773. He was the sixth son and ninth of 15 children. Not all of those children survived into adulthood. His father was King George III and his mother was Queen Charlotte of Mecklenburg-Streltz. Now, I hope I said that correctly. I probably haven't. 
Um, my pronunciation of foreign foreign names and foreign words is um, often a little bit off, but you get the idea. It's Queen Charlotte and George the Third. Now, the royal children were raised by a governess, Lady Charlotte Finch, and she stayed with the family, uh, I think, for over 20 years. He suffered from asthma, which ruled... Now, this is actually quite crucial. He suffered from asthma, which ruled out a military career. Um, so, because of his asthma, he was very, very poorly in the summer of 1790. He was actually confined to his bedchamber for five whole weeks. So, due to his medical advisors, they advised that he go travelling to avoid the very, very harsh British winters, which I think was actually quite good advice. But this was critical in, in what later resulted in the unlawful marriage on April the 3rd, 1793. So, Augustus wanted a role back in England. So, whilst he was away, travelling, he felt like like he needed some kind of substance. He felt almost like he was just kind of wandering around and didn't really have much of a purpose. So he wrote to his father about possibly becoming a cleric back in Britain. Um, and this was in August of 1791. Now I have a quote to read from that letter. So I'm just going to pull that up and read it. So in his first letter to his father, he wrote, at a moment when in some measure the Church of England is attacked, nothing can give it more strength than your majesty's giving one of your sons a place in it. But King George III never answered or replied to Augustus, Augustus's letter, uh, which I think was pretty telling because it kind of said, it kind of showed and displayed how much George III thought about this suggestion. Um, so having having not heard a reply back, he continued on his travels, which took him to Rome in November of 1792, where he met uh, a British aristocrat. There were lots of British aristocrats living out in Rome and travelling, doing the circuits at that time. This is where he met Lady Augusta Murray. She was five years older, but they fell in love. Now, um, he wrote again to his father at this point, which, again, I want to read a quote from. Again, sadly, he didn't reply. Um, so in January of 1793, Augustus once again wrote to his father saying, Should your majesty think my presence of any use at this moment in England, you have only to order. And once again, as I said, King George III did not answer. Now this shows to me how much Augustus actually wanted to return back to England to have a role. He was crying out to his father for support, which which never came. And again, I think this is fairly instrumental in what happened next. Um, so let's just go back um, and read. Let's continue our journey through history. Um, so... Having fell in love and receiving no answer to his letter, he proposed marriage in secret to Augusta, um, which she later refused. Now, she refused it because of this Royal Marriages Act, which was in place. Um, she felt that it would be improper for them to get married. Now, I did say earlier that I was going to talk about why this Royal Marriages Act came into being. So, going back a little bit further in history to 1772, the Royal Marriages Act was passed um, because two brothers of George III had made what he considered to be unsuitable marriages. Um, and this, this Royal Marriages Act decreed that no descendants of George III um, would... would uh, other than princesses marrying into foreign royal families could marry without the consent of the monarch. Um, however, if you were over 25, uh, but previously refused on these grounds, you could apply at that point to, to the privy councillors, giving one year's notice. Um, Parliament then, both Houses of Parliament, would have the final say. And if, if they felt that it was an unsuitable match, they could refuse it at that point. But 
if there was any contravention of this, so let's just say um, Augustus would have waited until he was 25 and then applied to the Privy Council, which put it towards Parliament, um, and let, let's just say they had refused at this point, he could have still gone ahead and married. However, um, there were severe consequences for this. The marriage would be declared null and void, and any children resulting of that marriage would be declared illegitimate. Um, and basically, they would have no rights to the succession of the throne. Um, Augustus, who was 20 at this time, needed permission from his father. Um, so, first, Augusta, as I said before, refused his marriage proposal due to this act. However, on April the 4th, uh, Augusta's mother left a hotel that they were staying at. Uh, the hotel was called um, the Sarmiento, and this was in Rome, I do believe. Um, Augustus entered the hotel with uh, a cleric of the Church of England and they married on this day in royal history, April the 4th, 1793, without any witnesses. It was just the three of them, Augustus, Augusta and the cleric. The three of them kept the marriage secret. In August of 1793, Augustus was recalled to England. Now this, we think, was due to a governor reporting of an inappropriate relationship forming between Augustus and Augusta, but little did the governor know that they had actually been married in secret. So obviously, without telling a member of the royal family, um, without gaining permission, it was in contravention of the Royal Marriages Act. Um, so having been recalled, um, Augusta and her mom followed Augustus back to London, where they arranged a marriage. Um, now, this marriage, they it, again, they, they kind of did it very, very low-key. They didn't use, well, he didn't use any royal titles. They were married, um, but again, it was still in convention. Even though it was done in London, it was still in convention of in contravention of the Royal Marriages Act. Um, this marriage, this match, resulted in January the 13th, 1794, the birth of a boy, Augustus Frederick. Now, George III, when he found out about this, he was angered and he declared this match null and void. Um, however, they remained living together as husband and wife, even though it was null and void, and they went on to have another child, a girl, Augusta Emma. Um, however, at some point, a deal was brokered between Augustus and his father, George III. We don't know the full reasons as to why a deal was brokered. Maybe it was finances. Um, but anyway, a, a deal was brokered and um, Augusta and Augustus finally separated. Um, the deal was that Augustus would return to the royal fold and he would be created the first Duke of Sussex. And that would also come with subsidiary titles as well, the Earl of Inverness and Baron, Baron Arklew. Um, there was also a parliamentary settlement, a parliamentary grant of £12,000 a year that would go to pay for his, pay for his lifestyle, basically. Augusta um, actually got, she actually did quite well out of this deal. She had full custody of both children and £4,000 a year as well. Now, £4,000 a year was an awful lot of money back then. Um, so it was a very, very good financial deal, financial settlement for both of them. I think money had a lot to do with this match. However, in March the 5th of 1830, Augusta died at age 62. And therein ends our tale of the love match, the illegal, unlawful marriage of Augustus and Augusta. And of course, obviously, Augustus 
became the first Duke of Sussex. There is more to this story, but in, in his later life, but that is for, I think, another day. Let's just go and see what people are saying. Right, people who have dropped into this live chat halfway through will probably not have a clue what I'm going on about. So I would probably suggest that you go back at the end of this video and watch the entire thing all again. Um, yes, that was an awful lot of money back then. Um, it was enough to sustain, you know, a substantial household and all the fancy clothes of the time and partying and all the rest of it. It was a lot of money. They both did very, very well out of that settlement. Um, Elizabeth Vagina said, always found this fascinating. It is indeed. It's, I really, really enjoyed researching uh, this. And of course, Augustus's mother, just for people dropping in, was Queen Charlotte. Um, and yes, he was one of Queen Victoria's um, uncles. And actually, he was a favourite uncle. And he actually restored, she actually restored him um, with quite, with some favours, which I, I want to make another video on that. But she was, she regarded him very, very fondly. Um, right, okay. As always, I want to keep these On This Day in Royal History videos fairly succinct and to the point. So, um, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a big old thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that you've enjoyed it and hopefully YouTube will then um, try and send it out to people who may be interested in this type of topic. Share on social media, hit the bell so that you know whenever I come on and do a royal talk like this. So, if you've enjoyed it, also of course, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. There will be more. So, from me, in Shropshire, mwah, to you all, and goodbye. And don't contravene the Royal Marriages Act.